You see, you see odd pairings and alliances form in these kinds of battle royals. Katie Bright's in there. She made her Rise debut last month. Ty, she was in a matchup tag team matchup with Laura Loveless. Laura left her high and dry. Now she's in here trying to put her stamp on the end of this year going into 2023, just like every other competitor in this contest. You gotta think this is gonna be such a great springboard for the young competitor that is able to pull this off and win in this talented field. I really believe this will give us a peek at the future of Rise Wrestling, regardless of who wins this battle royal, because you're seeing some of the young guns in the wrestling business getting a platform here on a very big night. They know the promotion that's going to go behind this event on IndieWrestling.us. Of course, behind Rise Wrestling on social media. Hardway in the corner now. Yeah. Get, he was getting worked over earlier by uh, by Golden Sheik. That's Hard Body Holloway out of the AIW promotion in Cleveland. A highly touted prospect, Ooh, just 22 almost almost years out. old. And Corbin being hallway. very smart. Those feet, there he goes. Hard body's out of here. In the runway, I called him Gold Sheik earlier. That is the runway. The Rise Tag Team Champions working over someone in the corner. I can't even see. There's just a mass of human beings in there. Ty, I'm going to tell you what, man. First of all, congratulations on the addition of your son to your Thank family. You. Thank you so much. And I'm glad everybody's healthy, everybody's home and resting. Absolutely. But you and I both know that as the youngest cross of the family starts his first first year in life, Rise will start their seventh year in 2023. Unbelievable to me. Look at this Johnny Norris. Is that is that Johnny Norris there? Looking good, but look at Colby Red. Music Tatiana as a battering ram. Colby is just a true blue chip athlete. This guy is no joke. I've had I've had eyes on Colby Red since he stepped into the ring against Matt Connor debuting in Rise. And I'm telling you, I've always thought he has every single tool needed to get to the next level in this company. Has come so close so many times. Look at Scarlett now. Scarlett, like I said, man, she'll fight anybody. Anybody, anywhere. See you later. There's pal. another elimination. Thanks for, for coming. Unreal. The Dark Horse may be to win this whole thing. Oh, I don't think uh, Scarlett's an underdog pick at all. I'll get, I, I'm right there with you. She may uh, be the one. There's what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. I'm comfortable with eight. I think Scarlett is going to be the winner. That's my pick. Now we're down to seven. And look at the smirk on the Berserker's face right there. She is salivating at being able to hurt this many people at one time. And now look at this, the runway going after Colby Red. Colby trying to fight out of that corner. Meanwhile, Scarlett working over Tatiana. Yeah, there is, is mass chaos in this ring There is certainly, right we're seeing all these rivalries come to a head here. We know there's been dissension between Colby Red and the runway Absolutely. since Colby wanted to uh, strike out on his own. You know, and you can't blame him for that. You know, th there are no second places in professional wrestling. Oh, and there's also a point where you start to understand, well, how do I want to be remembered? What's my legacy in this company? And I think Colby wants to make his own legacy and not rely on someone. Wait a minute, like a Katie Benjamin Bright. Steel. Katie Bright working on Scarlett. Scarlett up and over there. Wait a minute, Scarlett very precariously on that apron. That is that is the wrong place to be in a battle goes royal. A and there goes Scarlett! And we know that Scarlett has a long memory. She may not forget this one. Absolutely, but look at the runway! Capitalizing on the opportunity. That was a rookie mistake. You never turn your back in a battle royal. Especially on a tag team like the runway. And look at the final four. Now it looks you like want to talk about some talent in that ring right now. In this kind of situation, you got to think the runway has an advantage. Because even if Colby and Norris were to team up in a tag team situation, they know exactly what's going on. It looks like Norris is going to side with the runway here. But we know Johnny Norris had a reputation before he got here to rise. He worked as a mercenary. He, his services went to the highest bidder. 
Well, we all know that the runway has a pretty high bidding. We know Steel Corp will put the money out there to accomplish their goals. I think Colby is in over his head here. Maybe I'm wrong. All it takes is one shot, Ty. And the runway have to defend those tag titles Look later at the tonight. Strength from Colby Red. Norris is smart, not sticking his head in when he when he if he doesn't feel 100 percent comfortable. Why risk it? I'll look out here. What is this? The what runway is, this? is all tied up. A Styles clash! And the styles for the runway certainly clash Yeah, not, here. not quite the fashion, not quite the style they envision. Wait a minute, Colby, Colby look turned out. his back. You can't do that. He He's so emotional with the runway. And Norris is there saying, look, it's you and me now. So you want to talk about right two hands. big bad hombres right here. This crowd getting behind Colby, but is it going to help? Is it going to help take him to that next level? Huge kick! Caught him right in the shoulder blade. Threw the uh, balance off of Johnny Norris. German. Wow! Pure power. Unfiltered raw power this, from Colby this here. This Colby Red is another level than I've ever seen him before. We may be seeing the coming out party for Colby. He may be putting absolutely everyone in rise on notice here. Oh, and here we go. Norris fighting back now. Who's going into 2023 with the big win in their belt? Look what out. Is this? Colby out the back door here. Huge power to Falcon Arrow. Roll through, he's not done with him yet. Big jumping knee strike. Out he goes. It's over. One chapter of that young man's career may have closed with Steel Corp, but I believe the story of Colby Red, the true story of what this young man brings to the table is just beginning. One chapter may have closed, but the door for 2023 was just kicked wide open for headshot, Colby Red. Chase Oliver, a young man that via injury had to take a few months off in Rise Pro Wrestling. If you want to know how much Rise Management thinks of Chase Oliver, he was originally the young man that was scheduled to compete against the legendary Delirious back in July, but that injury prevented it. However, Chase is back, he's at 100%, and he wants to use this stage to make a true statement. I predicted Chase Oliver to be champion in 2022. That got derailed. And we'll see what happens in 2022. If you want to talk about having momentum derailed. The former Rise Grand Champion losing the title because of a global pandemic. A title he has been unable to regain. He's been so close to the top of the mountain. He wrestled Edric Everhart, two out of three falls for the number one contendership. Wasn't able to get it done. Trying to come out with a huge win to end this year to kickstart 2023. And I said this about Chase Oliver. At December of 2021, I said, this is a man that will be grand champion by year's end next year. That didn't happen. 
but we're going to see two competitors that are definitely in the mix for the grand championship here. We're going to see them compete in what might end up being the match of the night with the talent we have in the ring right now. All action here. We are at the Uniontown Mall, December 10th, 2022. My name is Jim Lotto. You're still Ty Cross. Always have been. And Tony Johnson, interesting to note, the man that replaced the injured Chase Oliver in that match with Delirious, as we know, turned into a tag team contest with Edric Everhart and um, the great, great Alexander, Alexander as yes. well. And we're seeing these two compete here right now, a match you can only see at a company like Rise Wrestling. I believe we're going to have a hard time keeping up with this action. I'm not even going to try. I'm just going to be excited for the contest. Color and elbow tie up here. And I believe in the spirit of competition, you're going to see a fairly contested matchup. Of course, George Ross signed this contest, one of the best officials in the Pittsburgh area, so we know that this one will be called down the middle. We won't have any fluke wins or any fluke losses here. These two athletes are going to show you quality in-ring professional wrestling action here. Tony bars the arm to try to control the posture of Chase Oliver. And this is what Tony needs to do. Uh, uh, a competitor like Chase Oliver is very reactionary. I don't think he comes in with so much as a game plan as he does prepare to react to any situation that he's put in. As you can see right yeah, here. Yeah, right there. Armbar, nope, you're not going to get me. I'm in, I'm out, and I'm back on top again. And Tony's going to need to try to keep his game plan and keep Chase Oliver grounded because he is such a reactionary, lightning bolt style of competitor. And we are seeing the advantage tilt back and forth very quickly here. Tony able to use those mat skills so fluid inside the ring ropes, so fluid on the canvas in that exchange that he was able to take control here. But you're seeing Oliver working his way back up to a vertical base to neutralize the pressure, neutralize the leverage. And this is what we're going to see here. Tony comes in with a game plan. He's focused. He meditates. He does the, the Using his height advantage to uh, slap on that top wrist lock. Everything Tony can do to try to get an advantage like within the realm of possibility, he does, including having a game plan, including coming out here and trying to execute the best possible way he can think to win. He's such an intelligent, cerebral competitor. You want to know how much of a polished pro Tony Johnson is. When, when he was taken down to the canvas on that headwalk takeover, he made sure his shoulders did not stay on the canvas. And I've known Tony for well over a decade. He was a groomsman in my wedding. He's one of the best competitors, maybe the best competitor I've ever stepped in the ring with. And I'm telling you right now, and I've wrestled Chase before. It was very early on in Chase's career when we were able to match up. It's just so fun to see two guys that you know have all the talent in the world step in the ring against each other. Back heel trip. Look at this. And you want to talk about evenly matched. This is what I love about professional wrestling. We're a few minutes in and quite literally a stalemate here. Now Chase coming back from an injury, you gotta wonder if perhaps that gives Tony maybe a slight advantage. Is Chase 100%? I know it's been a long time since we've seen him, so possibly. Possibly he could be 100%, but I'm not totally sure. Greco Roman he, knuckle lock here. He'll say he is, but look, if you look right here, this is an advantage, Tony, if that shoulder isn't 100%. Even if it's 99.5%, this is advantage, Tony, someone who works so hard on keeping his body at athletic peak performance. Tony has the leverage here. Chase is not going to be forced to try to keep those shoulders off the canvas. George right there on top of it. That's a sign of a good official. And is that extra stress on that shoulder? Well, it's certainly going to be put to the test here. And if you're Chase Oliver, you want to make a good impression here. You want to keep yourself in the hunt in Rise Wrestling. Look at the strength of Chase Oliver to come back from that. Unbelievable to drop through to take advantage. Tony, just an absolute wrestling machine in the ring. And he's got Chase twisted up like a pretzel here. Both shoulders captured. And this is really forcing Chase Oliver to go on the defense. Wow. Hammerlock back suplex, nicely done. Some of that Anderson philosophy to target a body part. And right now, it is advantage Johnson for sure. Tony, look at that. You do not want to be in the corner. Position. 
in this exchange here because the Iceman's gonna push forward. He's gonna press the advantage. And this is the first time in this matchup that we're seeing the momentum truly tilt. The Iceman getting the better of Chase Oliver so far. And it's really Tony going to that shoulder, picking a body part. It's the game plan, he's so smart. Very cerebral as the Iceman, always knows what he's doing there. A lot of ring generalship from Tony Johnson. But you can see how reactionary. He finds himself Deep in arm drag. Quick thinking, Chase Oliver able to get out of it. Misdirection from Oliver. Beautiful step up, Hurricane Rana. So dynamic is Chase Oliver. Shoulders down. Sometimes it's almost like Chase has a sixth sense in that ring. He knows exactly what's gonna happen just before it happens. He hits the buckle and he knows, I gotta get out of Dodge quick. And then it's move, move, move. He knows exactly where to go on instinct. Unbelievable, the talent in the ring right now. And just that quick, we saw just moments ago, Tony had the advantage. Now it tilts back to Oliver. And this is what we expected. And tit for tat, you see a chop from Tony earlier. There's a chop from Chase saying, listen, I ain't letting you get away with that in this ring. Up and over goes Johnson. Look out. The sidestep. Shooting wow. star. You want to talk about reactionary. Could be the conclusion of the contest. That was a close one, Ty. Tony needs to get back to the ground game, grounding Chase Oliver, because I think as far as move for move on the fly, I don't know if Tony can keep up with Chase because he is so good on the fly when the game plan goes out the window. Oliver charges on the apron here. And that caught for sure, right into the solar plexus. And down to the floor goes Oliver. The physicality is Tony. escalating here. Tony with the big dive. You wanna find out what the sixth anniversary of Rise Pro Wrestling means. Tony Johnson doesn't fly often, but he's willing to take a chance on this night. Well, both of these men have danced in the main event scene in that grand championship picture. Cover for, here. For so long without being able to get to that next level. Tony did years ago, but it's been two years removed from that moment now. So here we are, and, and you gotta wonder, is Tony thinking to himself, you know, how do I get back there? I've been so close. I had everything taken away from me, and it wasn't even my own fault. I never lost my title. I've lost my opportunity to get it back. But you've got to think that weighs on Tony's mind for so long now. And Chase Oliver to be so close to get that match with Delirious, everything going his way, and to have it torn away by injury. Two men who at the cusp of their greatness here at Rise Wrestling had it stripped away out of their own control. It's, it's sad, but that's the sport of professional wrestling. And now they're in there together against each other trying to prove that what happened to them was a fluke and they are both ready to get back to that next level. Ty, with everything you just said, not to take anything away from their in-ring ability because it's tremendous, but the bottom line is, from a business perspective, this may be a must win for both of these athletes. You really have to think of it that way. It has to, they have to think of it that way as a must win. I mean, who had more momentum in 2022, aside from PB Smooth, than Chase Oliver before that injury? And you gotta think, Tony, when he won the title, was at the top of the mountain. He had beaten Matt Connard, the best Matt Connard we've probably ever seen, and when he was grand champion. He overcame both Edric and myself to win that title, and to have it all taken away, it's just unbelievable. Tony was one step ahead here at some of that ring generalship, and Chase may be favoring that shoulder. Tony Down to the just, canvas here is where you can lose the matchup. Tony just bullying Chase there a little bit. You can see, I think it's really starting to get to him. And Tony loves competition. He loves being in the ring with someone his equal or better. Very Goku-esque of him when he's in the ring with someone like that. So you know he's gotta be loving every second of this, but it's also frustrating as a competitor not to be able to put somebody away. Man, Oliver got rocked with that European uppercut. It, Tony Johnson's European uppercuts are the hardest I've ever been hit in my life. He is the hardest strike in professional wrestling. Tony fighting out now. Chase just trying to, trying to go for something. Huge boot! That might have broken the nose of the Iceman. That was a desperation maneuver from Chase. He knew that he was 
on the on his heels here quite literally had to make something happen and he sure did quip the ice man ice man head, headed to the floor and oliver getting some some uh, momentum here trying to recover we know oliver's all action huge moon salt oh, right. moon salt takes out the ice man Move for move, Tony dives earlier. Chase says, you gotta dive. I got something better with the big moonsault. One, two, it's over. Oh, he got kicked out. Competition personified here tonight at Rise Wrestling. You look at the devastation. This match has caused these two. Both taking a breather. Chase has to try to get up and capitalize. Look at working on that shoulder a little bit. Possibly re-injuring that shoulder. John Wu kick, shotgun drop kick. And look at Oliver just sprinting to the finish line here. But the Iceman avoids the contact and makes Oliver pay for it. Wow, what a kick. You can feel the sense of urgency as this matchup continues to roll forward. And the leg trip into the drop kick. So fast, you could barely even call the action. Now I gotta drag a lifeless Tony to the middle Very of the ring. Very smart, keeping the Iceman away from the ropes. And keep in mind, that may have been a two count, but that was a situation where Tony Johnson was forced to get his shoulders off the canvas. He was forced to use that energy to kick out. He couldn't reach for the ropes. Just an un- Unbelievable contest, and these fans are enamored with the wrestling that they're seeing right now. Big fireman's carry, what is this? Snap, German! Gut wrenched him over, that was pure power from the Iceman. Look out here. Could be Huge going for trademark breaker. Iceman offense. Twisting backbreaker, extra torque for extra impact right there. Cover here, shoulders down. And every, every pin attempt high, you're seeing this the way I am. Things are getting closer and closer to that definitive three count. Absolutely, but I think Tony went for that cover just hoping to get the win. I don't think he believed that that was gonna be the win based on the look on his face. But I think he feels it right here. I think he knows this is the end. The Iceman could be going for that home run shot. He could be going for the conclusion of this matchup. Who is going to put themselves at the top of the ladder of Rise Wrestling? He doesn't see it. Telegraphed it there, out the back door, roll up, roll up. Tony returns the favor. Small package here. And you feel the urgency. They're trying to get the win. They know that this is close to the end. No one able to get the win here. Oliver escapes back heel trip. Jack Knight Pitt. Jack Knight Pitt. Man, everyone on edge here. The sense of urgency dialed up to 11. Big wow. collision center ring. Ty, right now, the, the first man to their feet will have a definitive, a definitive advantage, excuse me, in the conclusion of this contest. Who is it gonna be? Who is gonna have the advantage as we presumably head into the home stretch of this stellar matchup? What's crazy about these two competitors is I could also fully believe this match going another, another 20, 30, 40 minutes. They both have deep gas tanks, I'm telling you. Ooh, big kick right to the chest. Almost caught Johnson in the throat that time. Iceman out of the way. Another one. That one higher up on the jaw. 
Tony caught him. Iceman's gonna make him pay. Oliver counters out of it. Look out, huge! He almost huge. hit the damn ceiling, Ty. Giant spinning Uranagi flash drive! How did he kick out? Shades of his old tag team partner, Jay Flash, with that huge flash drive. This is unbelievable, and that shows you Tony is dipping so far into the well of maneuvers that he has to use moves from his old tag team partner to try to put this man away. But if you're Tony Johnson, you can see the, the look in his eyes. He's asking himself, what does he have to do? What he, does he have to do to put he knows Chase he Oliver to away? That is a level of competition we're seeing at Rise Wrestling right now. He knows what he has to do, and that's putting an exclamation point on this matchup. Tony going all the way to the top rope. Is this going to be? He's taking a chance. Is this going to be some type of attempt? Taking a Don't chance. Don't hit the sprinklers. No water in the pool. That could be a critical error. Big super a kick. A critical mistake. Big Avada Kedavra. What is this? Opportunity for Chase. Tony counters out. Poison, Poison Rana drops him right on his head. The Iceman doesn't know where he is. Chase Oliver, this is his chance. You've got to be kidding me! Break. What? What? How? We are seeing a Steel City Classic unfold here at the Rise 6th Anniversary Show. How did Chase kick out of that kick? Right to the temple, Tony was able to connect. And here we go now, Tony, setting up for that ice pick kick. Could this be the home run swing? Unbelievable Spanish fly! Tony may be out. He may be out cold. Oliver's gonna press the advantage! Oh Death my! Death driver in the corner. Tony is done! Tony is done! He's trying to get away! Wait a Tony's minute! He's holding a better position! Shooting star from the sky! He got him! Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this match as a result of a pinfall! No pressure! Chase! One of the damnedest matches we've seen in Rise history. What a contest. Unbelievable. Tony Johnson, Chase Oliver, with a late entry into the match of the year category. Tony perhaps getting over Salas again. Chase able to see and react quicker than anybody on the roster. And he is victorious. And Tony has to go back to the drawing board in 2023. A stellar contest. But now we have to ask, where does this leave Tony Johnson? And where does this propel one chase all over ahead of 2023. Championships! Introducing first, from where the wild things are, the team of the Bearcat, Keith Hunt, and the Appalachian Werewolf. It's been a rough year for Keith Hot. It's been a rough year for Tyler Vox. But if you want to erase all of those hard times, 
finishing the year the way they started it as Rise Tag Team Championships is a hell of a way to do that. I feel like there's nobody better at the year end event than these two. Malcolm Cambridge, Calvin Lewis, two young guns who have made their home in AIW Absolute Intense Wrestling out of Cleveland, Ohio. They've turned a lot of heads, not only in their home state, but also here in Rise. They are young, they are enthusiastic, and they are looking to really put their names on the map here in the Pittsburgh scene. Very excited to see what these two can do in this ring. I'm not super familiar with members only, but more than excited to see what they bring to the table. Then introducing your Rise Tag Team Champions. The runway, Calvin Couture, Tyler Klein. Tyler Klein celebrating a birthday this week, hence the party hats. And Mr. Design, along with the fashionista of professional wrestling, are tag team continuity personified. The best tag team in Rise Wrestling. And proof of that are those championship titles around their waist. It took them so long to get to the top of the mountain, but now that they're there, nothing is gonna take those titles away from the runway. BC Steel, conspicuous by his absence, but we know that there was some dissension in the ranks of Steel Corp. Maybe BC wants to teach everyone at Steel Corp a lesson. Go on, do it without me. It's, I wouldn't put it past Ben to try to make people appreciate me that way. From what I understand, BC actually uh, decided to go get a little sun. He's vacationing right now. Don't blame him one bit. It's December in Pittsburgh. Exactly. You know, speaking of BC Steel. Can we not? <laughs> I, I wish, but he's, <laughs> he's that influential. You know, Mama Steele is one of the nicest ladies you could ever meet, and she should be nominated for sainthood because she had to raise BC. Uh, absolutely. But you have to wonder, the runway do not have that extra pair of eyes at ringside. Will that affect the outcome of this matchup? That extra set of eyes is so important to a team that is used to it, to a competitor that is used to having it. We see the tag team gold being brought over here to the commentary table. I think that's the runway's way of taking a shot at me being you know, a former tag team champion. I gotta sit here and look at the belts that I used to have, that used to reside in my home. Now wait a minute, we've got party hats being passed out to everybody. Well, it's a party. Well, if we're gonna have a party, I want some cake. Malcolm Cambridge, very excited. I'd be excited to have a party too. I'm kind of bummed I'm not invited. Well, that's not how you treat a party guest, even if they are the only members. I don't know if uh, the runway are trying to get the, uh, the opponents to just forfeit here as a birthday present. No way, brother. The tag titles are on the line. There's the bell. We're officially underway. And I'm impressed that members only can, can keep Tyler Klein's party hats on while simultaneously 
punching Tyler Klein in the mouth. Well, at the end of the day, Tyler Klein, not a great person, but the hats were a gift, and it'd be disrespectful to discard them. The cryptids out there, they are having a good time. And now we're gonna see a little bit of dissension in the partnership between these two tag teams. Yeah, we all can't stand the runway, but at the end of the day, who's gonna get the advantage? And it's gonna be members only. And they're playing by West Texas rules. No two out of three. It's bold choice. What the hell are you talking about, Ty? I play a lot of Rochambeau. I'll tell you what's going on right now that I know clear as day. Members only are putting a hurting on Calvin Couture. And, this, and these teams may be having some fun here at the outset. The bottom line is someone is going to leave this building as Rise Tag Team Champions. They call it Cal Smoke Cactus in West, West Texas. I still don't know what the hell you're talking about, but I can tell you that members only are still beating the hell out of Calvin Couture. I miss those days. I miss beating the hell out of Calvin Couture, I'm not gonna lie. But you see the distraction there, let Tyler, or let Tyler get into the ring. Might have been a mistake for members only there. Well, they are they are young, you know, they're, they're they're young guns in the industry. Calvin Couture was uh, in a world of hurt and was allowed to tag out there. I'm not sure how wise that was. Now Keith Hodd, another former member of my, uh, my wedding party. What the hell does your wedding have to do with the sixth anniversary show? To tell you how close I'm friends with Keith Hodd. I love Keith more than most people in this world. Man, big collision from Vox and Hot. And to let you know my wedding party was really cool. Look at Tyler Vox with the power there, rolling all the way through into a double stomp. Vox all is the fired talent, up. All the talent in the world with Tyler Vox there. The Appalachian werewolf lives up to that name. Once he gets rolling with that momentum, it's a hard train to stop. Convincing Box to tag in a member of Members Oldberg. And if this is one pinfall to a finish, that was a mistake as well. I'm not here to criticize, but you can't win the titles if you're not in the ring. You see, there's a blind tag made. And that's why the runway or tag team continuity personified. Notice a true pro, Tyra Tyra Klein was out of it. Calvin Couture went for the cover right away. Trying to get out of here with those championships intact. Tyler Klein yeah, taking, Mr. Design taking a cheap shot. <laughs> Referee Brian McGowan, uh, man, he has his hands full here. And look at how smooth the runway are inside those ring ropes. Finds two. Not only are the runway on the same page, they're on the same sentence at the same word. But that is see, how... You can see how tucked into their own core they are trying to execute these maneuvers because when you're in a three-team matchup like this, you only have one free corner. So you gotta watch where you are, you gotta watch your spacing, you gotta know where you are at all times. And having someone like Ben out on the side... Direct traffic, absolutely. Direct traffic, that's gonna be a disadvantage for them when they're used to it. Yeah, none of the other teams are gonna have anybody out there too, but when you have a game plan when you're used to having someone out there with eyes for you and you lose that, it becomes a disadvantage. Here come the runway, and there you're seeing it, keeping their opponent in a corner, keeping them away from either team to tag out, and going for the cover to win the matchup. Did you notice they put that offense together and punctuated it with a pinfall attempt because that is how you retain the championship. This official is gonna lose all control, I can already tell. This is so much, so much to take care of and worry about. Now we're fighting on the outside. Well, you were right, Ty. This was gonna break down sooner or later. And I didn't see what just happened, but I heard a splat on the floor. It was a splat directly onto the floor. Calvin swing shots in, finds two and a half. 
and I believe uh, Calvin Lewis, not to be confused with Calvin Couture, it was Lewis that splatted on the floor there, and he may be hurt. Kitchen sink shot right there from Calvin Couture, mocking this crowd. That's a BC staple to mock the audience. Well, ultimately what Couture just did was drew Vox into the ring so he could lower another cheap shot on Malcolm Cambridge. And now two quarters of this ring are opened up and the half of the ring that is cut off is not the traditional half. You got two teams on the same side of the ring. So this is gonna create a, an awkward place for them to be in. Calvin Lewis now making his way back up to the apron. And you can see why the runway are the champions. They've dictated the pace of this contest, dictated the direction of this contest. Wow! And now Tyler Klein again getting involved. By hook in or by Fox's crook. Corner. By hook or by crook, the runway gets it done. And here's the hot, here's the tag. Now Klein has to get back to his corner. And Lewis is aching for that tag. He got it and he's rolling here. Beautiful, Beautiful. spinning neck breaker there off the Fisherman Buster. Looked like a moss covered three handle family credenza and then a suicide dive. No one on the apron. Two men in the ring, baseball slide. All competition has been laid to waste. This is members only's opportunity. Look out here. On prettier. Spiked him. Wait a minute, Keith. They lowered the boom on Couture that time. What Beautiful. innovative offense by Tyler Klein. Less innovative, but just as effective from Voxy. A kick right to the gut. Look out here. Beautiful overdrive neck breaker. Klein stands tall, or I mean Couture stands tall. Elevated DDT. It's over! And it gets broken up! Clyde barely able to get there to break up the pinfall. I can't even keep track of who's legal. Well, we have a cover one way or another. The runway now in all sorts of trouble. Wait a minute, where? Mentally. Tyra Klein's coming over here. You wish. Listen, I, hey, I hey, listen, hey. I'm, I'm retired. Wait a minute, Tyra Klein just grabbed the Rise Championship. Tyra Klein's gonna get himself disqualified. The runway may be feeling the heat. They may be trying Huge to get out of here. To they may be Klein. trying to get me disqualified here. Crucifix to save pitch. those championships. It's over! Boys and gentlemen, the winners of this match and new Rise Tag Team Champions, Kevin G. LaBoost and Malcolm Cambridge, members of the league. What has to be considered a huge upset, members only are the new Rise Tag Team Champions. BC Steel was not in attendance, and that may upset the apple cart for the runway. But the, the story here is that members only just put Rise on notice. If BC were here, you gotta think he would have been able to go get those tag titles and not put Tyler Klein on the floor where he eventually was cut off by Hot and Fox. 
The bottom line is, Ty, members only are the brand new Rise Tag Team Champions. Members only have put a stamp on Rise for 2023. They are the Tag Team Division because they are the Tag Team Champions. Good evening, Uniontown. If I could have just a moment of your time. It's been a little while since you've seen us. Since you've gotten your treatment. And I hope you enjoy this holiday break to rejuvenate yourself. Because as I help Getty Cahoon to heal from his contusions, abrasions, and mental scarring left by M.V. Young. We heal. We persevere. And maybe we grow. And maybe in the new year come new Modes of treatment, maybe new patients. <laughs> Happy six year anniversary to all of you at Rise Professional Wrestling. Enjoy your evening. talented athletes that Rise has ever seen. Christian Noir has joined forces with the equally unbalanced and equally dangerous Laura Loveless. a Japanese wrestling legend, a 25 year pro, and one of the most prolific the trainers in the United Sui States. A bona fide living legend is one Sumi Sakai, making her debut in her native country of Japan, in 1997, Sumi Sakai was the very first Women of Honor champion for Ring of Honor. One of the most prolific trainers and one of the most influential athletes in the United States, Sumi Sakai, the Joshi legend, has come to rise. Alongside her, AJ Alexander has wrestled all over this area, showing up here at Rise Wrestling to put it all on the line to make a name for himself alongside the legend. And we're gonna get into why this is such a special matchup for AJ Alexander, who has gotten himself in great shape the past six months. But I'm gonna tell you what, Ty, a quick fun fact for me. When I was 16 years old, I saw Subi Sakai wrestle in Monroeville, Pennsylvania. I was amazed. And here we are some 17 years later, I get the privilege to call this matchup for a legend like Subi Sakai. And a young man that's even more excited is AJ Alexander. He was inspired by Joshi, that's 
the women's Japanese professional wrestling, he was inspired to pursue this sport by the Joshi athletes. The late Hana Kimura was a huge influence on AJ Alexander. Sumi Sakai, a huge influence on AJ Alexander. Other Joshi legends like Mayumi Toyota, Aja Kong, they have had such an influence as to why AJ Alexander has pursued the sport of professional wrestling. I was around very early on in AJ's training, and I'll tell you, the Japanese wrestling style was something he was always interested in from the jump. So I believe everything you just said about his influence is coming from that part of the world. And Sumi Sakai. And then you gotta think Christian Noir's influences being what, the devil himself? And yeah, Noir and uh, Dahmer would get along very well. Or should I say the devil herself, Laura Loveless. Swing and a miss here from the wall. Slate play beautifully done. AJ moving so quick in that ring. And let's keep in mind, Subi Sakai has been wrestling almost as long as AJ Alexander has been alive. a 25 year pro. Stepping into the rise ring for the first time. And Sumi immediately tying Laura Loveless up in knots. Notice how quick Sumi went on the offense. And like a true pro going for the cover immediately. And I think Laura Loveless had her wear, had her uh, wits about her there, but stayed down for the two count long enough just to get that extra second Noir, of a breather. Noir forcing the distraction. Sumi turned her back and got waffled here. And we know that Laura Loveless has a bona fide mean streak to go with that unbalanced mentality she brings to the table. And you want to talk about how great professional wrestling is? AJ Alexander during the pandemic, during the shutdown of 2020, considered giving up the sport of professional wrestling. But yet here he is in the ring with a hero. It was getting, the, tra it was getting the chance to train with Sumi Sakai that brought AJ back to this sport. A true inspiration is Sumi Sakai for AJ Alexander. And I believe Laura Loveless is just something very disrespectful to the legend. And, and conversely, as much as this is an inspiration for AJ, it's an opportunity for Noir and Laura Loveless. Absolutely, and they're with Sumi Sakai, Laura Loveless, not only holding her own, dominating the action right now. Laura Loveless could be the one to get a win over Sumi Sakai. You want to talk about a career accomplishment. If Laura defeats Sumi, that would certainly propel her career. And both Noir and AJ are aching for a for a tag here. What is gonna happen here? Pair attacks. Man, look how crisp AJ Alexander is. He is moving faster than I have ever seen him move. He is so motivated right now. Huge running job, oh my goodness. He is in the best shape of his career. And what you're seeing right now is what true motivation looks like in professional wrestling. Ripcord turns the war inside out. Unbelievable. AJ in full control here. Trying to wear down, but no, Noir works his way out. Up and over and out the back door. 
Look out. Man, AJ bounced on impact. Could be an abrupt end here. And we know Noir would love, would love to play spoiler to this dream match opportunity for AJ Alexander. He loves to play spoiler to anything. He would spoil TV shows if he could. He would spoil kids' birthday parties. Huge missile drop kick. AJ avoids the contact, makes the tag into Sakat. What are we gonna see here? A little bit of tandem offense. Rocket launcher. And no Noir's gonna break it up. Now he didn't strike Sumi Sakai, so maybe a little honor there. Double octopus stretch. The intercostal cartilage being twisted and contorted all over the place. And I don't know if uh, Noir or Loveless are ever gonna submit, but look out here. This might be it. That would have been such a beautiful, beautiful finish to this contest. The octopus stretch into the roll up. But it goes on, and Laura Loveless is in such a bad way. Noir, though, rising from the grave almost to take Alexander and post him. We got Laura and Sumi in the ring. Sumi's caught. Sumi avoids the contact. AJ with the drop kick, basement drop kick. Sumi, wait for the. Wait for the offense here. Look out. Sumi plants Loveless. It's over. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the winners of this match has the results of a pinfall. Sumi Sakai and AJ Alexander. The Joshi legend has come to rise, and she is victorious. 25 years in the game, and as stellar as ever. And I'm gonna tell you what right now, Ty. AJ Alexander may put his name in the conversation for Rise Pro Wrestling, as that young man just had a legitimate dream match. And look incredible in that ring. And look at this right here, Ty. This is the ultimate sign of respect in Japanese professional wrestling. What you are seeing right there, that young man is having a career moment. You gotta be happy. You gotta be proud for what AJ Alexander. He is showing what is possible when you can believe in yourself and believe in professional wrestling. Second half of Rise Pro Wrestling. My name is Jim Amata. Six year Rise anniversary show. My name, of course, is still Jim Amata. You're still tied for us. It's been an exciting show. I get to talk with you. Lewis McGurn here. A, a long time fan favorite for this stronghold faithful. Lewis originally scheduled to compete in our tag team championship matchup. Drake Braddock not here. But Lewis will address the people. Listen to this crowd. They love the nerd, man. One year ago, I returned to Rise Wrestling. One year later, I'm still here. <laughs> a 
Unfortunately, uh, if you guys saw, my partner is not here tonight, Drake Braddock, boot camp, you know, those things. However, when I was gone for that time, I will not ever miss an opportunity to wrestle in front of every single one of you! They appreciate it. So, let's make it a new rise tradition. How about we do the Lewis Open Challenge? So whoever's back there, let's get nerdy. <laughs> Who's it going to be? And don't you get any ideas, Ty. You stay right I, here. I learned my lesson. Seattle's still well. him in the Battle Royal, Hardway Holloway. This guy has a reputation. He is based out of absolute intense wrestling. That's AIW out of Cleveland. He is a 22 year old prospect that has had a lot of people talking in the Buckeye State. He played defensive end for D Division I football at the University of Cincinnati. And what a specimen. And he's not playing any games right now with Lewis the Nerd. Hardway Holloway. But Lewis has been taking on jocks his whole life. This is nothing new for the Nerd. And we know Lewis is used to uh, being the underdog. He may be the ultimate underdog in this exchange. And he knows, he knows he's not gonna win a power exchange, a struggle here with Hardway Holloway. But if anyone in Rise Wrestling has a game plan, has done the math, has checked the statistics and the probability and the odds, it's Lewis the nerd, the math lead himself. Holloway Whoa, what ties. is this? For a second, I thought Lewis might have had the strength advantage. He's in, uh, he's in his rookie year of professional wrestling, but has already turned heads. There are, there are a lot of pro wrestling pundits talking about Holloway. Holloway does kind of look like a bully, doesn't he? Well, he played defensive end. He seems like one of those classic 80s jock bullies that you see in a film. And Lewis the Nerd is the hero of that film here in Rise Wrestling. I think this crowd's getting under Holloway's skin a little bit. And Lewis, uh, Look at Lewis! One step ahead and one step on the feet, well two steps on the feet. Cat and mouse here. You gotta get out of Dodge. All the way looking to cut the ring down in. There it is. You don't want to get boxed in the corner. And there's that defensive end speed right there. Division one athlete and in the ring right now. Look at the distance created. I was correct. But look at the speed and quickness of Holloway. He is a big guy to be doing that. He is one big bad hombre. Oh, look out, Lewis caught. Lands oh, right man. Into the post. 
Lewis definitely ate that post the hard way, that's for sure. When you look at how quick and how ring savvy Holloway is, keep in mind, he's a rookie. It's nowhere but up from here, huh? Absolutely, and Lewis is not a pushover. Former tag team champion, competed uh, previously in a challenge of the champion for the Rise Grand Championship. You know, not someone to scoff at, Lewis the nerd. Has a huge legacy and reputation here at Rise Wrestling. What power! And making Lewis think about it. Anthony Kingdom James would say it looks like six o'clock right there. This is absolutely a statement. Lateral press finds two. I believe we are seeing the uh, rise debut of an athlete that could be very impactful in 2023. And impactful in 2022 right it. there. I was about to say it. Speaking of impactful, you see a big hip toss here. Huge throw, my goodness. Lewis almost taking out the uh, vast sprinkler system here in this building. What, what is your obsession with the sprinklers? There's side? so many, Jim. Look at it. Well, we won't have a fire hazard in this building. I was the safest I've ever felt. Well, Lewis is not safe because he's being physically dissected. You could say he's being bullied right now by Hardway Holloway. Holloway, a real impact bully inside those ring ropes, man. Everything he does. Look at this, look at the speed, bang! <laughs> Lewis is in a bad way here. And I've seen Lewis fight back from a lot of adversity. I mean, it's happened to myself. I've wrestled Lewis a lot of times, and I'm telling you, maybe the biggest heart in all of Rise Wrestling, but I think the size and the power of Holloway might just be too much for the nerd here. And this is where Hallway can squeeze, use all that physical mass to weigh on Lewis. And Lewis, not a large competitor, not big in the shoulders, not big in the neck. You know, this is a lot of weight coming down on, on body parts that aren't super muscular. But That's I'll not to take what. anything away from Lewis, but he's not a super muscular competitor. Lewis may have the biggest heart in Rise Wrestling, and that's what we're seeing on display right here. here. We go. It's true grit and true tenacity. Lewis went back you to the toes again. You can't measure heart. Look at him fight back. Holloway not even budget from those shots though. Lewis is gonna have to stick and move here. Big elbow! Like that right there. Holloway still on his feet though. What is it gonna take to take this big man down? I've seen this, the big kick. He likes to follow it with a discus clothesline. Still not down. I believe Lewis is gonna have to try to outthink Holloway. He's not gonna be able to match strikes with this young man. He went for the code breaker. Look out. Oh God, look out. It's over. It is over. What an impressive debut. One, two, ring the bell. No! And Lewis wanted to make this challenge a tradition. It may be a very short tradition if Holloway has anything to say about it. I'm fairly certain that even at my peak, I might not have been able to kick out of that, and Lewis was able to. That is and Lewis so impressive. vicious shots in the corner. Nowhere for Lewis to go. This Holloway looks great in that rise ring right now. Could we be seeing a potential threat down the line for a title? And think about it, you're giving him that praise, rightfully so, when that young man is 22 years old Look at the in his first year of wrestling. Impressive here, what we're seeing, but Lewis fighting back. The mass of Holloway had him slip off those ribs. His size working against him here in that exchange. Huge super code breaker. He could have got it. It's over. Lewis landed the knockout Ladies punch. And gentlemen, the winner of this match has a result of a pinfall. The Matthews. Lewis stunned. Holloway for just three seconds, but you know what, Ty? It only takes three seconds. And Lewis with the shot that put it Holloway. Holloway back on his feet. Like you said, a three second stun, and the nerd gets the job done. You've heard of a game of inches. It was a game of inches because Lewis, within three seconds, 
won this matchup by a game of inches. And Willis, victorious here at the sixth anniversary spectacular. That's the boss right there, the ladies and gentlemen. The founder and the owner. Six years ago, myself, my mother, my father, where's my wife? Come on, blow up, man, I'm old, I'm tired. We started this as a family owned business. In that six years, that family has expanded so much. The wrestlers in the back who sacrifice themselves every time they're out here for our entertainment. They became family to me. Every one of you that support us, that allow us to keep running, you're family to me. It, <laughs> I'm a little emotional. Six years in, thank you that we're still here. Through the adversity tie, Brandon Kay has steered the ship of rise. The man fought and bled and sweat for, and cried for this company. Next year, I'm retiring after 58 years of wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> Next year, I want to wrestle the best. I'm going to challenge Brandon Cage, Whoa. sensei, teacher, maestro, coach. I saw your tweet about you asking fans who they think should be one of your final opponents in your 2023 retirement tour. And to be honest, I can't think of a better opponent for you than one of your best students to come out of any class you've ever had. Me, Tiger Style Lee Moriarty. That's right. And I know what you're thinking. I know you're concerned. You're worried. Can I keep up? Do I still have enough gas left in the tank? Am I still strong enough to keep up with my students? And I'm here to reassure you, you're probably not. But don't you want to find out? Don't you want to find out for yourself how much I've grown, how much I've learned? Because the last time you and I were in the ring, you beat me. And I ain't like that. So I need to get my get back. So all you got to do is say yes. And then on January 14th, I will fly right back to Pittsburgh, get back in the rise ring one more time, and show you how much I've learned and how much I've surpassed you. So again, all you got to do is say yes. The apex of combat may come home, but what is the boss's answer? the best student I've ever taught. I don't well, know. Look out. Look out. I, great I success. A huge enemy shot to the boss. Unbelievable. I feel like I should go in there and help, but well, what are you gonna do? There's, it's still gonna be three on do. one when you, you you have a new a new infant at home. There's You're gonna stay right do, here. It's three on one, but we need security. Where is Big? Where is our security staff? Somebody get out here! They are trying to end this Brandon K before his retirement tour ever begins. This is disgusting. Can someone get the hell out here if you can hear me back there? Not the enemy. Oh no. Thankfully, Tad and Cal Pope Paul. Can somebody check on Brandon? He gets a challenge from Lee Moriarty, and via the great success, we never get an answer. Chris LaRusso of Rise Management is out here. All of the great success took offense to him saying that the best trainee to ever come out of Brandon Case classes was Lee Moriarty. No, 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 no. I am not letting you ruin our night tonight. So you know what? I'll take both of you on by myself. Whoa, 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 Tad Jarvis. Well, Tad and Brandon were scheduled to compete against the great success. 
Listen, I don't, I don't know how wise this is, Ty. And Chris LaRusso, matchmaker extraordinaire, letting it happen. Well, he's not letting it happen, he just sanctioned it. I mean, that's a verbal, a verbal agreement, I guess. It's gonna be official. But I can't think this is smart at all. We just saw the great success take out the founder of this organization. If they're willing to do that to Brandon, you know damn well they'll do the same thing to Tad Jarvis. But look at Tad Jarvis fighting. With everything he's got. The only person I think might love Rise Wrestling more than Brandon Kang. It's his home. Oh, look out in the numbers game immediately. Wow! And Tad bouncing on impact. A nasty ricochet. I genuinely, genuinely believed it was over there. Harley Race style high knee by Johnny Norris. And as we talked about earlier, this guy's a mercenary. He works for the highest bidder. He's got no conscience, no remorse, and he's dangerous. The only people in this company I think could be higher bidders than the runway are the great success. Johnny Norris. Everything powerful and, and huge impact with every maneuver. Is a no nonsense mercenary. If he's under orders to hurt Tad Jarvis before this match is over, winning is secondary. Johnny Norris goes to the highest bidder and he cashes the check, period. And that's why Tad may be in a lot of jeopardy here. Wow. Jordan Styles showing some good strength there too. Big spine buster, almost a freak accident. And don't get me wrong, Ty. I've said several times, Jordan Styles is one of the most talented young athletes on this roster. But that doesn't mean I have to endorse his attitude. And I don't like his attitude. And it's things like attacking our founder that really go over the line. So much talent in young Jordan Styles. It's so impressive. And I really don't think he gets the, the praise, the accolades that he deserves for how talented he is. And now Tad is boxed in the corner, not where you want to be when you're giving Johnny Norris a free shot. I mean, they say if you're going to be dumb, you got to be tough. And I think it was a dumb mistake to take on both of these men at one time. But Tad Jarvis is tough as nails. But I still think it might have been a mistake. And this referee looks clueless because Jordan took a cheap shot at Tad right in front of him. How about admonishing somebody? Maybe calling for a disqualification. That may save the career of Tad Jarvis who took a boot right in the chest, right in the stern. Here's the thing with Tad Jarvis, man. Keep your shoulders to the mat. Let it end. You stood up for your boss. You stood up for your friend. You stood up for what's a father figure to you in this company. You did your best, but keep your shoulders down. Well, the career of Tad Jarvis could be in jeopardy. The career of Brandon K could be in jeopardy. Could the retirement tour be off? We were so close to a match between Brandon and Lee Moriarty. Now we may never know. We may never see that matchup. And the great success collectively have been running roughshod over Rise for a very long time. And this sixth anniversary event is no different. And to your point, Ty, it may be smart for Ty to just let this one go. Oh, look 
out. That's unbelievable. Tad. Tad had no way to protect himself. Tad, stay down. crowd was behind Tad all the way, but I just think it's just too little too late here. I'm getting very, very uncomfortable watching this. Just stay down, Tad. He's still fighting to get back up. Still fighting to get back up. Still fighting from underneath. Jarvis literally doesn't know where he's at. He went to his corner for a tag out of instinct, but there's no partner there. It's over. No, still. I'm not trying to sell Tad short, but he's taking too much of a beating here. And I'm, I'm hoping before we end this broadcast, we can get some kind of update on Brandon K. Yeah, it's, it's too much at this point. Right into the chin lock. The successful Saint just wearing down an already worn down man. And you know as well as I do, with the great Alexander, Gerard Garrett, and of course, Jordan Styles in the ring right now. They're loving this because they, they have put the attention of the sixth anniversary event on themselves because one of the big stories coming out of this event will be the status of Brandon K. And Absolutely. who is who is responsible for that? It's the great success. Spybuster. Come on. Still Tad. two. Come on, Tad. As a spine buster aficionado myself, I have to tell you, that was a beautiful maneuver. Wait, wait, what is this? Brandon Kay's coming from the back. Brandon Kay trying to be restrained by, by our officials. And I don't know how smart this is for Brandon either. He's fighting on one leg to get to the ring. But he's in better shape right now with one leg than Tad Jarvis is in the ring. He's still the better option here. This crowd's starting to come unglued. And I believe Jordan just realized that Brandon's on that apron. Wow! And you want to talk about how much Brandon K is willing to sacrifice for Rise Wrestling. He wants to get involved in this matchup. Clearly hop, clearly on one leg. And on the last leg of his career on top of that. In comes the boss. And lucky for Brandon K, Norris didn't get in the ring. And I don't throw this term around often, Ty, but Brandon K is a bona fide Pittsburgh legend. And a huge knee DT there. And now we got two hobbled in the ring. Wow! Unbelievable power from the one-legged Brandon K. Not enough strength though with that one leg to hold the pinfall down. There are a finite amount of Pittsburgh legends. Brandon K is one of them. Right for the super kick, couldn't get it. This is unbelievable, now the knee. That would have been incredible. He caught it anyway! He got him. It's a beautiful story, but at the end of the day, I think this one's all over. Wait a second now. Right how, in the mush. How much longer can Brandon K keep up this fight? He's clearly in a lot of pain. He baited him in. And that's the savvy veteran right there. But Styles and K are legal. Oh, oh no. man. And I'm not sure how wise it was that Jarvis tagged himself in there. Oh, 
And Brandon's hurt on the floor. Wait a minute, Jordan has the Emmy, and he just tattooed Jarvis right between the eyes. The tail is old as time. Point shot. No, wait! He kicked out of the Emmy shot! That may be a controversial count, but I mean, it's still two, and Jordan is not going to hesitate to do more damage. No, no, the foot was on the ropes. Jordan doesn't realize it. Jordan doesn't realize it. He was overzealous on the pinfall and didn't check the ring positioning. And I'm begging this referee to assert some authority here. There's two men in the ring there. What is this? Where is Tad finding this? Will Barrel! He got him! Ladies and gentlemen, the winners of this match is the result of a pinfall. First class, Brandon K. And the social media icon, Ted Jarvis! What an unbelievable outcome to this contest. The Cowpoke now, Cowpoke Paul out to join in the celebration. Wait a minute, action Alexander, is still going crazy here. Alexander's out there as well. He, he and Cowpoke Paul are scheduled for a bull rope match. And where the hell is Cowpoke Paul going? Oh, wow! The cowpoke took out everybody. The cowpoke looking like a cow meteor there. And cowpoke Paul is making sure that Alexander is secured by that bull rope. And this match is underway. Alexander just realized he he is now attached to Cowpoke Paul. There will be no running. And Alexander has tried to make Cowpoke Paul's life hell for months, and it's payback time. Right up, Cowpoke! Each and every time the great success tormented Cowpoke Paul, he must pay his tab. Right here is the great Alexander. And the Cowpoke Posse is out here in full force. Great Alexander can't get away, he forgot. And that is a dangerous matchup right here. Lost in all the chaos is that a bull rope match does not happen often in professional wrestling because of how dangerous it truly can be. And the diamonds in the rough are taking a beating right now. That cowbell can split you open very, very quickly. How Pope Paul is on fire right now. I'm gonna tell you what, Ty, we're supposed to be impartial out here and I, I sure try to be, but if there's anybody that deserves a beating, it's the great Alexander. If there's anyone you wanna see hand one out, it's Cal Pope Paul. Cal Pope Paul has been adopted 
by this Uniontown crowd over the past 12 months. Look at this. And this is Cowpoke Paul's forte. The bull rope, but oh, no! Oh, man. Great Alexander turned it around. Cowpoke may be, uh, he may be out of it. And this is where things get so dangerous. What a huge tornado DDT! You heard the thud on the floor here in Uniontown. And our great crew from IndieWrestling.us picking it all up for you. And I gotta be honest, with as dangerous as this matchup is, I'm concerned for our camera crew. And you heard the thud on the spine that time. And that sign comes straight from West Texas, where they don't play two out of three Rochambeau. And look at the dents made by the body of Cowpoke Paul on that sign. We've seen Calpo Paul take so much punishment, but this might be more than he's ever had to deal with. And obviously, it goes without saying, there is no disqualification in this bull rope match. It's pinfall or submission to a finish. Referee George does not have the authority to stop this matchup. which means that the great Alexander can try to inflict as much punishment as he wants he is using that with cowbell. that cowbell. Absolutely, as I'm sorry. a razor to cut into the forehead. This is just abuse from the great Alexander, look at that knee. And Alexander is so proud of himself, so pompous. He's just doing what he wants in there. Wait a second. Shotgun drop kick. And now, Alexander got hit right in the jaw. And if there's anybody that deserved it, it's certainly the great Alexander himself. That arrogant jerk actually put the word great in his own name. That's not his legal name? I don't know. I don't know the guy's I social security card. Name. Regardless, Calpo Paul's birth name is Calpo Paul, correct? Oh, look out here. Cowpoke's got the chair, look out. I just realized this is a battle of uh, adjective first name wrestlers here. Cowpoke Paul, Great Alexander. We got much more serious business going on, Ty. This is gonna be brutal for the Great Alexander. Oh, right in the gut. Oh! oh no. Small of the back. Holy hell. A lot of times you see those shots up by the shoulders. That was in the small of the back. The violence escalating in this bull rope match. And I'm gonna say it again. There's a reason you don't see these matches too often in professional wrestling. Oh no. Oh! oh! The spine of Cal Pope Paul. I don't know how he kicked out. Good God. Cal Pope Paul, he's been working with Bull Rope since he was eight months old. Raised on the ranch. Tough as they come. I don't think Cal Pope would ever submit. He doesn't have quit in him, but he may be choked unconscious. The mind might not give up, but the body has to eventually. Yeah, that's physics, Ty. Unfortunately, all the guts in the world don't overcome biology. 
And look at the welts on the body of the great Alexander. And mind you, they're still attached by that bull rope, which makes this so, so dangerous. Cover here. You gotta think that this matchup, the bull rope would be advantage cowpoke. But I'm just not seeing advantage cowpoke here right now. And here we go. Are we gonna see the bull rope come into play? Oh, yes, we are. God. That will take the flesh off the body. I'm telling you right now. This may resemble a Dahmer scene by the time we're done because flesh is gonna end up on that canvas. Oh, wow, no. wait a minute. That actually is a photo of that Cal Poe calls his mom, and she's a very nice lady. I've had the chance to say hello to her here, but what an arrogant jerk, the great Alexander taking a cheap shot on Cal Poke Paul's family. You that don't, forced Paul to cut loose. You don't get any lower than that. You don't mess with Cal Poke Diane. I actually don't know her first name, I'm just guessing, but this is unbelievable. Look out. Ukrainian leg sweep by Cal Poke Paul had the great Alexander all tied up in that bull rope. And this Union Town crowd is rallying behind the Cowpoke who just took Alexander inside out. The biggest mistake Ray Alexander could have done was go after Cowpoke Paul's family. The Paul family. Alexander writhing in agony, and you can see the welts already on the spine. Alexander deserves this and a hell of a lot more. Cowpoke Paul taking out months of frustration here. Targeting Cowpoke Paul's family is a new woe, even for the great Alexander. What's sad about the great Alexander is you know that every new low isn't the lowest he can go. Torture rack variation. Beautiful into the layout there. And Paul had to use every muscle in his body to power out of that pinfall. And Ty, you know as well as I do, if, if Alexander is victorious here, we're never gonna hear the end of it. Well, he beat the man in his own match, the bull rope match. I wouldn't blame him one bit. And you can't say he's cheating because it's all legal here. And what is Cal, po I'm sorry, what is Alexander looking for? And it is a rise staple. Well, clearly Alexander knew that was there. A favorite weapon in rise wrestling, the door. We've seen competitors go through the door before. Well, as I said, obviously, this is a game plan from Alexander. He knew what he was doing. He knew exactly where to find that. That's no accident. Ooh, ooh. Oh, no. We've seen this before. Oh, my! Oh, man. Splitters and shards flying everywhere. As if this matchup wasn't dangerous enough. The fecal chance rained down on the cadaver that is Cowpoke Paul. And no. he kicked out! Cowpoke is gonna go down swinging. The Cowpoke Posse is gonna rally this young man just a little bit further. And that brought me to my feet. This is unbelievable. These two young athletes, young competitors given everything they have. Are we going to see a pile driver on the chair? Yeah. 
A look out. Wait, no! Keep fighting, Paul! He caught him with the boot! Turnabout fair play. Pile driver! Alexander got spiked. When was the last time you saw a pile driver? And Alexander is being asphyxiated right now. This Remember, is unreal. no DQ. He's reaching for that chair. Will he get to it? Pass out or tap out, Alexander. It's your choice. He's trying to get to the chair. It's over! It was a war of attrition. But Cal Poke Paul and the Cal Poke Posse stand tall as Rise celebrates six years. Cal Poke Paul might be a Cal Poke, but tonight he's an electrician because you can feel the electricity in this building. That young man right there in the center of that ring, Cal Pope Paul, may very well be not only a future grand champion, but the future of Rise itself. Ladies and gentlemen, it is yours truly, Brian Pillman Jr. And on January 14th, I am coming to rise in Uniontown, Pennsylvania. I'm coming for the gold. I'm coming for the glory because I'm the best second generation wrestler in the world and it's not even close. Rise Wrestling, but in all of Pittsburgh professional wrestling. Over 365 days as grand champion. Pretty boy Smooth. We're gonna find out, Ty. Can PB Smooth go the full calendar year? All of 2022 
into 2023 as the Rise Grand Champion. He will put himself in rare air if he can do just that. The perfect combination of size, speed, agility, and power. No flaws in his game and all the style to go with it. PB Smooth has met all comers for that grand championship. But Edric Everhart may be on a path of destiny. We're gonna find out before we go off the air tonight. It has been a who's who of challengers from all over the country, including that man in the ring standing across from Pretty Boy Smooth, Edric Everhart. And he's felt the ball. First the challenger. From the south side of Pittsburgh, weighing in at 225 pounds, he is the new ugly, Edric Everhart. He is the south side scumbag. And introducing the champion, from the Players' Lounge via Hempstead, New York, towering in at six feet, nine inches tall, he is the Urban Playboy and your Rise Grand Champion, Pretty Boy Smooth! And of all the competitors that Pretty Boy Smooth has faced, Right here tonight, have you ever felt more of a big match atmosphere than you feel right now at the sixth anniversary? As I said, Ty, Edric Everhart has put himself in the conversation. He's bet on himself in 2022, and we're gonna find out if that bet's gonna pay off. But PB Smooth has met and defeated a laundry list of worthy opposition. Victor Benjamin, put him down. Jackson Stone, put him down. Ron, Ron Mathis, Mathis, put him down. It has been just a who's who of the best competitors this area and this country has to offer. Tony Johnson, the list, Colby Red, the list is incredible. And keep in mind, through all those challengers, PB Smooth has stayed as sharp as ever. And keep in mind, through all that time, Edric Everhart has focused on nothing but manifesting his destiny, willing this night into existence. And notice how calculated Pretty Boy Smooth is. PB Smooth isn't going to flinch. He's not going to feel the pressure of a big moment. And right now is the biggest moment of Rise, the, the main event of the sixth anniversary spectacular. And, and we, are, we are already over a minute into this contest, and we got first contact. A lot of jaw jacking to start this match off. And this, trying this to stick where, and move. This is where PB Smooth excels, putting his physical tools to work right here. See Edric again, sticking and moving. PB Smooth has all the intangibles, but Edric Everhart may have the mindset because at the end of the day, this is a business tie and it's not about ethics. It's about results. It's about the money. It's about being able to put yourself in the position to be as prominent as possible. And that is what the Grand Championship allows either one of these athletes. Oh no, Edric went for that third chop and got caught. One shot, one shot put Edric down to the canvas. the power of the grand champion. And Edric's been in this position before. He's felt all of this, he's game planned for all of this. And this is wise strategy. Edric trying to force a timeout here. 
but PB is gonna have none of it. He's not gonna give Edrick a second to breathe, that's for sure. PB Smooth does not care about the, the destiny of Edric Everhart. PB Smooth cares about legacy, and that is what Pretty Boy Smooth has forged here over the past 12 months in Rise, his legacy. Well, what is this? That's the music of Christian Duarte. Wait a minute here, Ty. What, what's going on? Well, we, we see the, the video for Noir, but where where is he? PB Smooth is looking to cut Christian Noir off at the pass here. Wait a minute, is this? Wait a minute, was this a ploy? What is going on here? Did Edric play in this? Is this a mind game from the war? And clearly, Edric hangs up pretty boy smooth. This distraction has allowed Edric to, to take, take advantage. And this may be Edric's doing this. He's laughing in the center of the ring. As I said, it's not about ethics, it's about results. And Edric Everhart just tilted the results of this grand championship matchup in his favor. I knew he had a plan. I knew it all along. I didn't think it would be that. And Ty, you uh, more or less ran the roads with Edric Everhart for 10 years. But that is not the same man that we're seeing in front of us right now. It is not. We're seeing the most driven, maybe an all of Rise Wrestling, the most driven competitor. Edric using the ring post, and there's nothing about sportsmanship that has to do with that, but I can't emphasize this enough. It's about the results. For Edric Everhart, it's about that man becoming the grand champion. And as we've mentioned, it's about legacy for PB Smooth. Kidney shot, that's nasty. And PB going into defensive mode by turning on the offense. And those kidney shots did a number. As someone that's had a kidney stone before, I can tell you, pain on your kidneys is some of the worst pain you can experience. And Pretty Boy Smooth just went face first into the middle rope. Those ropes are steel cables. Absolutely, as an in-ring competitor for a decade, you can, you can attest to that. And this is a rare time that we see PB Smooth in jeopardy. How much can Edric exploit this opportunity? See, what so many competitors try to fit in to a time frame with their strikes, Edric Everhart knows I only need one. I plant one elbow to the chest and throat of Pretty Boy Smooth, and it's as impactful as 10 strikes from a lesser man. Edric Everhart almost getting in a fight with a, with a child in the crowd here. He's and, so... And don't think he wouldn't. He's, he's not so above that. He's so disliked by this entire audience. Foot on the throat. Not, a, not ethical, but effective. You see so many villains, in quotes I say, villains of this, in this industry that are cool and that are liked. There is no one in this audience that likes Edric Everhart. He is such a vile scumbag. Well, he has no conscience. If Edric has to take out PB's knee and potentially end his career to win the Grand Championship, Everhart's gonna do that and he won't think twice about it. Look at these straight right hands. Measured, dialed and delivered, the straight right hands. PB smooth down on one knee. And using how the rare ropes is to pull that? Up. 
How rare is that, Ty? And that's the added. Oh, look! PB never down and out! I was about to say that's that added mass and size and strength that Edric Everhart's able to put into those strikes. But Pretty Boy Smooth is just on another level right now. And there we go. There's the shot to the knee. That big shoulder and bicep of Edric Everhart right to the back of the knee. And again, Ty, I'm going to say it. It's not often we see PB in this much jeopardy. He's the champion for a reason, but Edric Everhart is the number one contender for a reason. And you can see the pain on the face of PB Smooth. You want to know how resourceful Edric Everhart is? He has PB Smooth off of his feet. I was about to say, we never, hardly ever see Pretty Boy Smooth off of both feet. And now PB steps into this matchup, a man that has already beaten Edric Everhart for the Grand Championship. Does he take this match lightly? I've never seen PB Smooth take anything lightly, but does he take Edric lightly knowing I've beaten this man once? He is not on my level. He cannot step to me. I'm going to completely disagree with you, and I'm not trying to, to, to cause a conflict here, but Pretty Boy Smooth is a Grand Championship because he, nev he never underestimates the competition. And you can bet your bottom dollar he didn't underestimate Edric Everhart. But is it in the back of his mind? I've beaten him before. This isn't anything to me. And you gotta see, you gotta see it in the eyes of PB Smooth right now. Defiance in the Grand Champion. Oh, but he's down to one knee. And that's that size that Edric's put on. And he takes him down. Big mid-ring collision. And you see he put both forearms, both elbows into that big diving clothesline, all of his body weight to take the champion down. And Pretty Boy Smooth, in his eyes moments ago, you saw the defiance, but now you see the distance, the daze on the champion in his eyes. The challenger is getting desperate. The challenger is getting desperate right here. You can see the frustration on the face of Edric. I think it's all part of the plan. I think he's getting his breath back. You have to wonder what Edric has in the playbook next. Now Edric looks like he's going to the top rope. Not one to go to the top rope often. He's a virtuoso from the middle rope with that cutter, but this is something different. Well, it's all on the line here. Grand Championship, sixth anniversary show. He went for the splash. He went for the splash and there was no water in the pole. And now PB may look to separate the shoulder of the challenger. And that could have been the fatal mistake. That could have been the fatal mistake for the championship efforts of Edric Everhart. But no, it looks like he went to the eye. Again, it's not ethics, it's results. And the result of that exchange is the challenger is still in this matchup. Edric Everhart still has a chance to walk out of here as the grand champion. And the man who is the legit 6'9 might be legit blind in one eye. But a huge snake, guys. And like a gunshot going off, that Lariat taking down Edric Everhart. And referee George, one of the best referees in Pittsburgh, assigned this contest. Gonna lay down the count here. Pretty Boy Smooth now needing to feed off that energy of this rise stronghold crowd. An advantage Edric Everhart does not have. It's a slugfest. 
And this is a fight. It's a heavyweight slugfest right here. I think Ever Everhart just lost the tooth. And look at the leverage that PB has with that height advantage. Edric has to swing up. PB can swing down. And when you see a competitor saying, come on, hit me, and taking the best shot, it is so demoralizing. Edric putting everything into those shots and having no effect, but the kitchen sink does the job. Oh, man, big collision. You can hear the impact. With a full head of steam now, the champion. A freak accident. And this momentum has shifted entirely. Christian Dewars cashing in his title shot that he won for winning the Rise Rumble. This is now a triple threat match for the Grand Championship. Wait a second, what? And I didn't even see Noir come out here. Rise management, Chris LaRusso, he looks worse for wear. I don't know if Noir may have hurt LaRusso on the way out here. He strong-armed his way into this matchup. And Noir- Cashing in the opportunity. Let's not forget, Ty, Noir won the Rise Rumble in July and does have an opportunity. Noir. And this is genius to do it now on the biggest stage, under the biggest lights. Noir looks to play spoiler. Noir is gonna play spoiler. But the, the odds have been stacked against PB Smooth. And it's over. No, Noir is able to stop the count. He missed it, the official. Wait now LaRusso has to get involved. Because the official might be blind. Wait, and what is going on goal. here? We don't have an official for this grand championship match. George was blinded by Noir. And Noir screaming, die, damn it, die, into the ears of the champion. Christian Noir could play the ultimate ace up his sleep. And he's back on the back again. He's choking the champion down. But what happens? There's no referee. What happens here? And I Eddie believe Boy Smooth is out. Here comes another ref. PB Smooth may be choked out. PB Smooth may be unconscious. If he checks the arm. It's over. And Edric Everhart keeps the official from checking the arm. Huge roaring elbow. The match continues. This has degenerated into complete chaos. Complete chaos in the main event of the anniversary show. A brain buster from Everhart takes Noir all the way to the floor. What is gonna happen? Our the champion is unconscious. We have no official. The grand championship hanging in the balance here. We have a third referee. And where is Noir? I don't see Noir. Noir's out on the floor. He's done for. He went, no! He caught the cutter. Huge right hand. Wait a minute, there's Noir. Noir intercepts PB Smooth. And it's complete chaos, complete anarchy in our main event of the sixth anniversary spectacular. And Pretty Boy Smooth is fighting off both challengers. This is unbelievable. The ultimate wild card has been played by Noir. The and ultimate ace up his sleeve. And just when you think our grand champion has found himself in every possible predicament over the last year, this is completely foreign. Wait and a minute. Miss. Wait, the, gotcha! PB was blind. No way. Who, ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this match, the new Rise Crack Champion, the new ugly, Patrick Everhart. What the hell just
just happened? Brad Warsony in Uniontown. Edric Everhart pinned the war. PB Smooth lost his championship without even being the, involved in the decision. The former champion may be blinded. Bottom line, Ty Cross, bottom line is this. It's not about ethics, it's about results. And these results put Edric Everhart as the grand champion. It was about manifesting destiny. And he did it by hook, by crook. Ty, it's a, it's a historic evening, but we got to sign off. For Ty Cross, I'm Jim Obata, IndieWrestling.us. Join us back here, Rise Wrestling, January 14th of 2023. And the story for 2022. By hook, by crook. Oh, wait a second. This night's not over yet. Chase Oliver, who was victorious earlier tonight in one of the most impressive contests we've ever seen. And these two have a history. It was Edric Everhart who initially injured the shoulder that took Oliver out of action for months. Derailed his 2022. Here's the bottom line, Ty. We're gonna find out. Is 2023 the error of Edric Everhart. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. <laughs>